G'day reefers, I'm Cam the Fish Guy, welcome to Gallery Aquatica TV. Today we're at Redlands College in Brisbane and we're standing in their marine science lab in front of this beautiful eight foot mixed reef tank. Now this tank has done really well in the last few years and today we're going to run you through the reasons as to why this tank is so successful. <laughs> So looking at this tank, you can see that it is a very successful reef tank. The fish and corals are really happy. The water's clear, there's very little algae. There's a lot of indicators that this tank is doing really, really well. Now, because we're in a marine science lab, we have access to a whiteboard and we're going to list the different reasons as to why this tank is so successful. So the first thing we'll start out with is we'll talk about the equipment and why the equipment works so well for this system. So let's have a look at the lighting first. Now this tank is lit by five Hydra 26s. So it gives an excellent spread of light. Now we've programmed this light to have an ideal um, schedule for the corals. So you definitely say that the lighting is excellent on this system. Next, the water flow. We've got a Gaia style wave maker down this end and we've got an Octo Pulse down this end. Now they're both on programs which uh, vary with the amount of flow they're putting out, but they complement each other really, really well. There is of course the return pump flow, which does help with the overall water movement, but the main source of water movement are the two wave makers and they're really providing excellent flow in this system. Now the third major category when it comes to the equipment on this tank is the chiller, which we have in this cupboard here. Now the chiller is a TK1000. It's doing an excellent job at keeping this system very consistent in temperature. So as you can see, we have great lighting, great flow, consistent temperature. So really what this means is we have got ideal environmental conditions for a reef tank. So that's gonna be our first on our list of reasons to why this system is so successful. The second thing on our list of reasons why this tank is so successful is water chemistry. Now, a lot of people know water chemistry is very, very important when it comes to having a successful reef tank. And the first thing that we have done with this tank to ensure that it's got good water chemistry is we've set up a filtration system which fully uh, and effectively reduces the nutrients of the water. Now, by nutrients, we're talking about nitrate and phosphate more than anything else. And with this system, we've got a very strong refugium, which has ketomorpha, which is sucking the nitrate and phosphate out of the water. We've also got a great protein skimmer. We've got a great white protein skimmer, which is also pulling the bulk of the waste out of the tank but also we're looking at the stability and the range of calcium KH and magnesium now there are other factors that we look at occasionally like trace elements but the big three calcium KH and magnesium with this system are being well and truly looked after with a dosing pump running Triton um, into the tank so Triton is of course complete it uh, has all the elements required for your reef system. Um, so with the water chemistry, we've got our nutrients controlled by our filtration system, and we've got our uh, macro elements and trace elements going in with a dosing pump running Triton. So the water chemistry on this tank is ideal for running a mixed reef tank. So that's number two on our list. So we've looked at the environmental conditions of this system, we've spoken about the water chemistry uh, of this reef tank 
and why it's a benefit to the corals. The next thing which is really important about having a reef tank is the balance with the ecosystem. Now this in some way does relate back to water chemistry because if you have an imbalance with the ecosystem, it will typically show up in your water chemistry, often with nutrients, nitrate and phosphate. But let's talk about this tank and why it's so successful. So you can see we have a, quite a large tank, but there's not a huge number of fish. In fact, we probably have uh, under 15 fish. You can see we've got four chromas, there's a, a relatively large fox face, a medium sized blue tang. We've got a lawnmower blenny, there's a few cardinals, quite a few uh, little fish. But overall, the fish load on this system is very sensible and I'd probably call it conservative. Um, but that does mean that we have a nice balanced ecosystem. The amount of waste created by the fish is well and truly processed by our filtration system, the skimmer and the refugium as we spoke about previously. But there's also a beautiful balance with the corals and the cleanup crew in this tank. So there is not a huge number of stony corals which makes it quite easy to maintain stability with the calcium, KH and magnesium. There's a few soft corals, but there's not a, a ridiculously large number of corals. And so it does make for an, a very easy balance with the system. Um, there's not a huge amount of coral feeding that needs to be done with these corals as well. And so the, the mix of corals does make for a nice, easy balance with the ecosystem. And the other thing I mentioned, the cleanup crew. So this tank has got a really good example of a cleanup crew which is in balance with the rest of the ecosystem. We've got starfish, uh, strom snails, trochus snails. We've got sea cucumbers, which are great for the substrate. There's an abalone and a collector urchin. So everything is really in balance. And the other consideration with the balance of the ecosystem is the speed with which you set it up. So this tank was set up nice and slowly. It was established over about a year before it was fully set up. And so having that slow um, establishing of the ecosystem really does make it easier to keep the system in balance. So that's going to be the third point on our list of reasons why this tank is so successful. It's a well-balanced ecosystem. So the last thing on our list of reasons why this tank is so successful is the maintenance regime that this tank has. Now, the first thing with maintenance and probably the most important is the testing of the water, especially the nutrients, calcium, KH and magnesium. So those things certainly are tested regularly with this tank. And so to be able to see what the levels are doing over time allows you to uh, change anything that needs to be changed, so the dose rate of the triton supplement going in, uh, or the refugium or things like that. So testing the water is one of the most important things that is done for this tank on a regular basis. But the next thing is just the general maintenance of the tank. This tank gets the occasional gravel vac. It gets uh, fairly regular small water changes. Um, but overall, there's not a lot which is done to this tank other than the testing. Um, but one other point I will make that this tank has got a, a great maintenance regime with the equipment. The wave makers and the pumps are every six months, they're pulled out, they're, they're fully soaked in pump plunge to remove any uh, coral and algae and keep them really nice and clean. And for a tank which is the age of this, which is still on its first uh, set of pumps with the wave makers and the return pump, uh, it, it really goes to show how well you can, uh, or how long a lifespan you can get out of your equipment when you do look after it properly. And this is certainly a good example of that. So the maintenance on this system is the fourth reason on our list of reasons why this tank is so successful.
One of the things that we're trying to do when we create a reef ecosystem is replicate the conditions that corals have when they're on the reef, but in our home or office. And this, this tank here at Redlands College is a great example of successfully doing that. And the list that we have behind me really sort of explains the, the reasons why we've been able to have such a, a great healthy ecosystem. And I'm just gonna run through it very quickly one more time. So the first, uh, point was the environmental conditions, the great lighting, water flow, um, the temperature stability, all of these things is really critical. And when you think about the ocean and uh, how consistent things like the temperature are uh, and uh, the, uh, the flow around reefs, um, it, it really is a great example of how you can uh, replicate those conditions in your reef tank. So the second thing, the water chemistry, this is something that people often focus on and it's a very important aspect, um, partly because people are able to test these levels and testing is a really important thing which we'll talk about in a sec, but the, uh, the water chemistry makes a huge difference to the success of a reef tank. Um, having your levels in range and also the stability, it's critical to have this sort of success. Uh, number three, well-balanced ecosystem. This is something that uh, you'll find a good uh, LFS will be able to guide you through the, the, the slow setup of your tank, ensuring that you've got uh, fish that are going to get along with the corals that you've got, corals that are going to get along and not sting each other, but more importantly, the number, uh, the biomass in your tank and so the amount of livestock and having that in balance with your filtration and your maintenance regime is also really important. And then the last thing, the maintenance on the system. Now the maintenance will vary depending on uh, the type of equipment you've got, the size of the tank and that sort of thing. And it really does sort of feed back into that uh, point number three, the well-balanced ecosystem. If you did have more fish uh, or more biomass in the tank, you may need to do more maintenance. But it's all about having that balance so that you can provide everything for your reef tank that it requires to flourish. So let's go back and have one last look at this tank. So I'll just make one more point, something that we didn't put on our list, and that it really comes back to the balance with the ecosystem, and that's about feeding the tank. Now, this tank is uh, fed um, generally five days a week for the fish and twice a week for the corals. Now, this, um, in this marine lab, there's actually phytoplankton being cultured, and so that is fed to the corals, and that is quite a, uh, a clean way to feed your corals, and it, it certainly doesn't cause uh, huge problems with nitrate or phosphate. Before we go, we're just gonna point out the frag tank, which is also in this marine science lab, and it's an equally successful tank as the display tank. And you can see we've got uh, very healthy frags growing really quickly. We, we do <laughs> have some xenia, which always grows quickly. It's almost a bit of a weed, but uh, behind that, there's some leather frags and some acros and everything's going really well. And the reasons are the same as for the display tank. Um, it's a well-balanced ecosystem with good environmental conditions and the, the corals are just absolutely thriving. But that's it for today's episode of Gallery Aquatica TV. Hopefully you've learned a little something about the reasons why these tanks are successful and you're able to apply that to your home reef to hopefully improve the results that you're seeing. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Happy reefing. That's it for this week's episode of Gallery Aquatica TV. Don't forget to like and comment on all our videos and subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned to Gallery Aquatica TV for more exciting episodes to come. I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Happy reefing!